Hey folks, it's Timothy here with Jank Diver Gaming. Teld's been doing a fantastic job at these peasant update videos, but I wanted to take this one personally because I think it's such a fundamental shift for our cube that I just wanted to ensure that everything's accounted for. No offense, Teld, but this one's personal. Before we go over this peasant cube overhaul, I'd like to remind you that you can find links to our Discord server in the comments down below where you can come draft with us completely for free and give your input about our cubes. You can also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and check out our podcast, The Jank Tank, for some cube-related discourse. Alright, on to the changes. So our first change is an aesthetic one. We're swapping the original gin So our first change is an aesthetic one. We're swapping the original Ginger Brew art for the objectively better, less terrifying wilds of Eldraine art. We've heard reports that the So our first change is an aesthetic one. We're swapping the original Ginger Brew art for the objectively better, less terrifying wilds of Eldraine art. We've heard reports that the Throne of Eldraine Ginger Brew art was making players uncomfortable and uneasy, and we want to guarantee the safety and mental preservation of all of our players. Remember, Jank Diver Game is a safe place for all Magic players, and we want the art we hand select for our cubes to reflect that. Next up, we'll be swapping out Vampire Sovereign for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. This might seem a little strange at first, but let me explain the rationale. Vampire Sovereign's been played almost exclusively as a life gain card in our cube, and Ginger Brew functionally gains the same amount of life as Sovereign for a significantly cheaper mana investment. Magic design is so sleek and pushed these days that we're looking for any opportunity we can to cut our curve without compromising on power level, and this swap should fulfill those goals. Following that, we have Citizen's Crowbar out for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. This actually fulfills two key goals for us. First, players have expressed that there simply aren't enough Citizen payoffs in our cube for Crowbar to really feel like it pays you off. But those same players also warn that adding Darlin of the Masses to the cube might make green-white Citizens too strong in our environment. If we're not going to play Citizen payoffs, it doesn't make much sense to keep a Citizen token card around. Second, in keeping with the mental preservation of our players, some players expressed concern about the flavor of using a crowbar to destroy a gingerbread man. That level of violence feels unnecessary for a card game, and with the increase in ginger brutes from this update, we're inclined to agree. This is one of our bigger changes, and honestly, we're a little uneasy about it. Up until now, our cube has always maintained equal amounts and distribution of two color lands. However, we're breaking symmetry and removing Sacred Foundry to add an additional copy of Ginger Brew. We've noticed through extensive testing that our red-white drafters always draw the perfect mix of lands and spells with the ideal fixin' whenever it suits them to draw it, so it's become abundantly clear that they'll function just as well with one less dual land. Besides, red-white is most likely to benefit from the new Ginger Brute meta, so the balance seems appropriate. We'll keep a close eye on this change, but thus far our Boros drafters have always hit perfect mana on curve every single game where it matters. Battle Screech is coming out for an additional Battle Screech is coming out for an additional copy of Ginger Brute, which actually solves a lot of core issues that this cube overhaul might cause. The bird is the natural predator of the cookie man, and with so many scrumptious cookie people entering the cube, we feel it's appropriate to allow them time to propagate effectively. It's also a little known fact that the Jank Tank co-host and Jank Diver Game and founder and CEO Chris is a huge Vorthos who makes practically every cube related decision based on flavor alone with no strategic or long-standing gameplay considerations, and he thought a cube without birds would fit the in-world context of a setting pop populated by ginger people perfectly. He also aptly pointed out that the introduction of so many colorless creatures makes flashing back Battle Screech basically unachievable. 
Blue didn't receive that many changes, but we've landed on Micromancer as a cut for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. We wanted to minimize the feel-bads associated with filling a deck with so many one-drops, but then being unable to tutor for them with a card that specifically mentions one-drops. We toyed around with the concept of instead replacing all one-mana instants and sorceries with Ginger Brutes, and we actually just did that too. It's a bit unprecedented, but cutting all one-mana spells freed up so much cube equity for additional Ginger Brutes. Is it spells has also been an overperformer for a very long time, and this was the only logical solution we could come up with in our three minute conference call to dampen the power level of that deck. Next up, Lightning Strike is out for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. With Ginger getting upon us, it didn't add up that we'd still want to play such a high density of 3 mana burn spells when so many cards in the cube can gain 3 life on a whim. We determined that Lightning Strike essentially has no text in the new delicious meta we've created, and so it's finally time to cut this long time classic. Despite just recently adding the card, we've cut Aftermath Analyst for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. All of the designers involved agreed that this change was self-explanatory and didn't need elaboration in the video. We're also taking this time to swap Moment of Truth for Tezzeret's Reckoning. We've debated extensively about these cards in the past, agreeing that Reckoning is a powerful effect, but acknowledging that alchemy cards aren't appreciated by a very wide audience of players. Moment of Truth has synergies with all of our blue-based graveyard decks, but takes a small consistency hit when compared directly to Tezzeret's Reckoning. In this instance, we're switching back to the slightly stronger Alchemy card, since we personally feel it's in line with general magic rules to not be distracting, and actually gives all our blue control decks a significant advantage. This might seem like a minute, insignificant change to spend so much time on, but we here at Jank Diver Gaming strive to create the best cube experiences we can, and so much care and conversation goes into even the finest details of our cubes. We're cutting Elvish Mystic for an additional copy of Ginger Brew. One mana creatures are a dime a dozen these days, and we feel that our modernized approach to peasant cube design doesn't leave much room for one mana creatures that don't have haste, aren't food, don't have one, colon, ginger brute can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste, and or two, tap, sacrifice, ginger brute, colon, you gain three life. Elvish Mystic has none of those relevant lines of text. Gilded Goose does though, so we're breaking rarity restrictions to introduce one copy of Gilded Goose as a 361st card in our cube. And finally, we're trimming Glorybringer from the Unrestricted Cube for a copy of Ginger Brew. First off, we feel like it's imperative that we maintain the singleton nature of the And finally, we're trimming Glorybringer from the Unrestricted Cube for a copy of Ginger Brew. First off, we feel like it's imperative that we maintain the singleton nature of the Unrestricted Cube, and since we don't currently have a copy of Ginger Brew in that cube, it felt like a great addition. Glorybringer's inability to target other dragons with its exert trigger has really diminished its effectiveness in higher power level cubes, especially compared to its performance in Amonkhet Limited, where it was a decent filler card for most decks. The haste also matches up a bit too well against the one copy of Ginger Brute we'll be adding, and we don't want to encourage our players to keep their Glorybringers back to block Ginger Brew, because that's just not ideal cube gameplay. It might seem strange to mention an unrestricted cube change in this video, but we're of the opinion that players will already be investing precious wild cards on crafting ginger brutes for peasant cube, so we might as well reward them with one less card to craft in the unrestricted cube. You're welcome, players. And that's a wrap on this Peasant Cube update. I'll admit there's some amount of apprehension about the changes we've made, with a few swaps being out of our usual comfort zone for Peasant Cube. We believe the overall changes will, however, increase meaningful decision making, maintain mental preservation for all of our players, and most importantly will likely not affect Red White's performance in any meaningful way. If you have any comments about these changes, or you want to test them out yourselves, remember you can find a Discord link in the description down below. As always, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. My name's Timothy with Jank Diver Gaming, and I'll see you next time.
The bird is the natural predator of the cookie man and was... <laughs> oh, my God.